And I looked up, and behold, a pale horse, and his name that sat upon him was Death, and Hell followed with him. Here's your look at the McFarlane Toys DC Multiverse Death Metal Batman. Following the universe-shattering events of Dark Knight's Metal, the Earth is enveloped by the Dark Multiverse and has transformed into a hellish landscape twisted beyond recognition. Willing to sacrifice his own humanity for the greater good, Batman wields an evil Black Lantern power ring, which grants him the power to resurrect the dead. Now leading an army of zombies and riding a bat cycle made of bones, the Dark Knight wages a war against the Batman who laughs and his omnipotent goddess, Perpetua, in his mission to save the DC multi. Before we get down to the review of Death Metal Batman, who's got to be the coolest Batman ever, the first thing we're going to want to do is figure out how tall the figure stands. Taking the tape measure to the very top of his cowl and stopping it right there, Death Metal Batman stands 7.4 inches in height. We can quickly switch that to centimeters, revealing that the figure stands 18.8 centimeters tall. Just before we get down to discussing why I think this is the coolest Batman, we're going to do some size comparisons. Let's bring in the Merciless Wave Batman, which seems to be always the Batman now I'm bringing in. It's one of my personal favorites. We can also bring in one of the recently looked at Drowned as a size comparison. And of course, yes, if you're going to be comparing Death Metal Batman, you're going to want to bring in his nemesis. There is the Batman who laughs. All great looking figures, all different in their own sense, different costumes, different designs, different cowls, but you can all see they're really super cool figures produced from the folks over at McFarlane Toys. Accessories for Death Metal Batman are a bit on the slim side. He does still come included with a trading card, as you can see, riding his trusty steed, the Bat Cycle, which we will be looking at in an upcoming review. I can't wait to get Batman on top of that Bat Cycle. It's literally a Bat Cycle made of bones. Does that get any cooler? Oh, and yeah, he's holding a big giant scythe. But you can see there's some stunning looking artwork on the front. Down below, we've got Batman Dark Knight's Death Metal. Flip it around to the back, not only do you get yourself a read-up, which I did read at the beginning of this review, but you also get the necessary 411, telling us that the source for this one is Dark Knight's Death Metal Number 1, Comics 2020. Real name is Bruce Wayne, height 6 foot 2, and weight is still 210 pounds. So it goes to show, even though the environment has changed drastically for Bruce, he still managed to maintain that lean 210 pounds. Let's go ahead and put the card to the side. He also comes in clue with a display stand. Nothing really new to report here. I know I've spent some time talking about it's always the same display stand, yada, yada, yada. But it is literally the same display stand as we get in all other cases. Most of all cases. The DC logo down below. One single peg hole at the top. You got yourself a display stand. I, again, there's not really much to be said for that. But he does come included with his scythe. The scythe, as you can see, if I hold it up next to Batman, right there, wiggling back and forth, it's basically the same height as Batman, just a little bit taller if you factor in the blade. Getting a closer look at the scythe, it's got some really neat-looking sculpt to it. This, I would imagine, is right up McFarlane's alley. I'm sure he's been dreaming of doing figures based on these characters. You can see, like, the just kind of deformed shape of the handle, for example, and then all the wrappings that go around it. It's a shame, really, that the wrappings don't have any additional coloring to it. It's literally just all that chestnut brown. But I do like the irregularity and the shape of it. it. Like I said, I just think that this is something that McFarlane Toys had to sit down for a second, drool kind of coming down the side of his face, and he's just thinking, I am so excited to do Death Metal Batman. And I'm excited for the fact that we get to finally look at this figure. You can see the blade on the end. It's not sharp. Um, you can see it also has had a little bit of silver added to it, with the middle section being a very, very dark, almost black-like gunmetal gray. It does fit into either one of Batman's hands, although I like to display it on this hand. I don't know why. It's just a matter of more preference than anything else. You can basically just take it, and you can feed it down Batman's hand if you want to. Just feed, feed, feed. 
you can also just widen the grip as well. I mean, that's another way as well, around it. And also, if you're having difficulty getting any of the accessories into Batman's hands, you can also use the hot water trick, where all you're simply just going to do is submerge Batman's hand into hot water, just enough to soften the plastic, pry that open, and then he can very easily then hold the big giant scythe. Oh, that's so super cool. Okay, so let's go ahead. You can imagine I'm probably going to spend a little bit of time talking about how cool this Batman is. It literally is a meatloaf cover art just done as an action figure. Nobody probably even knows the reference I just used of meatloaf. If you're old enough, you probably do. It is literally the coolest Batman around. He wields in his hands, as you can probably see, that's right there. He literally wields in, in his hand a black lantern ring. And with that, resurrects an army of the dead that he leads to strike against the Batman who laughs. I mean, if that isn't just like the definitive thing as a teenager, you would want to see a B.A. Batman driving around on a bike made of bones with an army of the undead led behind him. That is just the coolest thing around. And I will say that translates to a pretty good looking Batman as well. You get more of the grizzled looking Batman with a little bit of stubble down below on his chin. My only thing I would say is a critique to the head sculpt. As good as it is, and I do appreciate the fact it's got that shorter ears like he has in the comics, I feel like they could have gone a little bit more on the stubble. It's really only around the area of the chin. It sort of comes across more as just a wash of paint, which is really what it is. It's just a wash of black paint that they've smeared along the bottom of it. They probably could have added just a little bit more on the sides there as well, because it literally is just all honed in on this one area here. I do like the fact that they added a little line of black to its lips. Uh, yeah, it's sculpted in there, but the little line of black definitely defines those lips and lets you know that they're there. You also have these little tiny little slits for eyes painted here in white. And you do like the fact that the cowl has a sheen to it. Well, maybe not necessarily the rest of the costume does. The little bit of sheen that they added to his, his cowl really just adds a little bit more, adds a little more pop, I feel, to the sculpt. But you want to talk sculpting, though. He's literally got a long, long tailored trench coat with very similar Batman markings that you would expect to find on his costume if this was literally his cape. Like, if you look at it from the back, you could kind of imagine this would be a makeshift cape that Batman is wearing. But the idea that Batman is even wearing a trench coat, do I even have to explain how cool that sounds? I love the fact that they got some spikes all across the, the shoulder areas here, and actually on both sides. When you look at it, it has the look at a, like a bat wing with all the, the individual like little bones, little spines in its fingers. Kind of, again, looks like a little bat wing. I love that. But if we open up, oh, a couple little buckles there on the sides. But if you open it up, first of all, I really like the shape of this particular bat logo. It's simple, it's effective, and I like the fact that it stretches across his body. I also like the fact it's raised too. That's a nice touch. But the costume is definitely very familiar of a traditional Batman costume with all these additional, though, added these additional lines that they've added in here, just texturing. It's all about the texturing. And this Batman has a whole lot of it. Down below... Gone Away is a traditional looking utility belt in favor of skulls, skulls, and more skulls. Yeah, gotta think this was right up McFarlane's alley. I do like, despite the fact there's so many skulls going on here, there is still a very familiar bat logo. Although it's a little bit more stylized than the one that we get on his, on his chest, on his torso here. Um, the jacket is pretty soft, it's pretty pliable. Luck luckily it is, because of course, when we have a look at the bat cycle in an upcoming video, you really would hope that this would be soft enough that he would be able to mount his steed well enough. Get a good gander at the arms here sculpted on Batman. These big giant gauntlets that he's got on the side look like they've been forged by hand. You can see all these nice little riveted points and sharp spikes that I'm sure he would use to inflict damage. I mean, it's just, a, it is literally a heavy metal album coming to life here. As we get a bit low, lower down on the figure, we've got, a, again, a couple of bat-shaped logos here. In this case, being utilized for Batman's knee pads. And then you, again, got some extra spikes there down below on his boots. Really loving the design of this. It's not really much I would necessarily change on this. It's always a case where I could say, yeah, they could have probably used a little wash of paint. I always continue to go back to the same point, but I've seen some real talented artists online adding additional coloring to these costumes. 
And boy, does the fingers, the figures really do differ from what we're literally looking at right here. I'm not disappointed the, fa the way that this figure ended up turning out, but I do feel how much more could be enhanced by if they just added a wash of black over top of it, just to bring out some of those details, especially when you're looking at the texturing done to the costume. I feel a real opportunity missed perhaps by not adding a wash of black. Black wash really does make a lot of things pop on figures. Sometimes too much of it can def definitely ruin a figure, but I don't think it would ru ruin necessarily Batman here. I think if anything, it would only enhance the figure overall. So let's have a look at the articulation here on Death Metal Batman. I even just like saying Death Metal Batman. Head rotates all the way around. It hinges down. It hinges up. And you can also rock it back and forth. You know, I'm surprised I also didn't mention this when we were having a look at the head sculpt, but I reminded myself to mention it now, that the head sculpt does remind me a little bit like the Flashpoint Batman that we looked at not too long ago. Slightly different, but very, very similar in design. As for his torso, his torso is on a ball joint. I will say, though, I'm, I'm happy to see that they've improved that cut that they've put into the torso. When we first looked at some of these earlier first wave DC multiverse figures, the one thing I really didn't like was the way that they tried to blend the cut of the torso to the rest of the lower half. I feel like they're definitely improving on it. You still get the articulation point in the torso but I feel like it's done in such a way that it doesn't look like some real irregular shape. I mean, like, again, it follows sort of the natural flow of where it would go around the abdomen muscles. It goes kind of a little bit lower here, but at least it's not high enough that it looks too off. Really happy with that. As for the arms, the arms hinge out. Despite for the fact that he has these big giant front flaps on his jacket, the plastic is at least soft enough that you can bring the arms out perfectly fine. Full 90 degree angle bend. You can rotate the arms all the way around. Yet yeah, they're going to be hitting a little bit more of that plastic as you do your best to try to rotate those arms all the way around like that. He does have a swivel at the bicep. He has a double hinge on the elbow. And he also has the rotation in the hand, which is a little harder to kind of get in there because of the gauntlet blade, but rotate that all the way around and also hinges back and forth this way as well. I suppose the other thing they probably could have done now that I think about it a little bit more so is again, you've got the ring there on one of Batman's fingers. If they had only done something just to kind of make it stand out, I understand that it's the black lantern ring. The ring by nature is going to be a black color. So yeah, it's going to be blending into Batman's gloves just a little bit more. But if they had just added something just to make that look a little bit more stand out for the rest of the Batman figure, because if not for me just looking for it, I would almost even forget for the fact that he actually is wielding the ring in the first place. As for the lower half of Batman, let's get around his trench coat here. The legs split out. Nice ratcheted joint going on there. You can also bring the legs forward and back because they did use a softer chain right here. It means it doesn't kind of restrict, limit what you can do with Batman's legs. He can march back and forth perfectly fine. He has a swivel, and the way that they've done it, they've put the swivel just above the leg straps. Very smart the way that they put that there. I mean, if you look really closely, you can clearly see there's the, the, the joint cut right there. But very smart that they put it right above the belts. So really, if you look at it far enough from the distance... It kind of just looks like it's the top of those belts, those little straps there. Then he does have a knee bend. The knee bend right there, you can see the leg, the, the joint, or I should say the knee pad actually stays above the joint right there. You can also rotate. Can't really necessarily rotate Batman's lower leg. I, I feel like he probably could have had it, but really, I mean, you can't find fault for that because technically he does have the articulation point up there. And then last and certainly not least, Batman's feet do move back and forth this way. And you can also rock it back and forth with some toe articulation as well. Uh, this would definitely be a figure that uh, I don't necessarily say needs necessarily the bat cycle. The bat cycle over, overall just enhances the experience. And definitely if you are a big fan of the death metal line of comics, I feel like the bat cycle is crucial if you want to display it. But you know, even if you don't end up picking up the bat cycle for yourself, let's get him a stand here. It's an overall de decent looking Batman, big, bulky in a post-apocalyptic world, wielding again a black lantern ring and having an army of the dead behind him. Even if you don't include a bat cycle in displaying this figure, it's definitely got to be one of the baddest looking Batmans around. And I say that in the best of ways. Oh, to be a fly on the wall during one of these writers' meetings when they were first fleshing out the concept of Dark Knight's death metal. And I gotta believe, a kid who grew up in the 90s, specifically as a teenager in the 90s, was the one that probably came up with this idea. 
Now, if you were to ask this writer, hey, come up with an idea of what you would do with a death metal concept. This person, of course, growing up in the 90s would have thrown out immediately, well, what if we throw the Cape Crusader in a post-apocalyptic war? Immediately, you would just assume the writer would be dismissed and told, you can't do that with Batman. But no, the rest of the room is running with that. Well, what else would you do? Oh, okay. What if we give Batman the ability to wield a Black Lantern ring? Of course, the reaction of the rest of the room is, and? Oh, okay. And he can resurrect an army of the undead that follow him on a battle towards the Batman who laughs? What else would you do? What if we give him a bat cycle made of bones? And uh, what if that bat cycle had a big giant bat head on the front? And what else would you do? What if we gave Batman a big giant scythe and instead of a cape, he had a big long leather trench coat? It is by far probably one of the coolest concepts around for Batman. And I got to believe, again, there's some kid right now my age that grew up in the 90s that would have come up with that idea. Heck, I would have come up with that idea being a teenager in the 90s. It basically checks off all those boxes. Of course, omitted here in final looks for this particular Batman is his trusty steed, the bone made uh, bat cycle, which I will tell you, McFarlane Toys did release as a standalone release. It didn't come included with the Batman, but I guess if they had included it with the Batman, the price of it would have been a lot greater. So it is something that you have to buy separately. Rest assured, though, and I know I'm probably hard to read here, I am super excited to get that Bat Cycle out on display and have Batman riding on top of it. It is by far probably one of the coolest Batman I've seen, not only in the comics, just the concept alone of the Cape Crusader, a dark knight himself, wielding an army of, of undead with him. I mean, that idea just writes itself. That is it easily is the coolest concept around. I'm very, very excited to get the Bat Cycle open up. I know, I'm probably really, really hard to read. As for the figure itself, because I know I'm kind of getting off on a tangent here, it is a great looking Batman. It is definitely different than what we're used to seeing with the Cape Crusader, but yet still very, very familiar. They didn't change too much to the, the initial core design of it and has been translated really well from McFarlane Toys, despite its longer jacket, even though the jacket is a softer plastic. So I don't think it's going to be an issue having him on top of the bat cycle. The sculpting of the head is great. The sculpting of the entire body is great. And again, the fact that he's wielding a big giant scythe is, is, is again pretty cool. I probably have said cool several times already. What do you guys think of the death metal Batman? I always like reading your comments down below. Also, if you guys are new to this channel, something I always frequently say, but if you are somebody that just popped into this channel with this review, hello, come on in. Make sure you hit the subscribe button down below. Make sure you turn on the bell notification as your way of telling YouTube that yes, you do want to see more videos coming up from this guy. But make sure you turn on the bell notification to make yes sure that you come back to this channel Monday to Friday, 12 p.m. and 2 p.m. Eastern Standard Time and keep those back peepers peeled because not only are we going to be looking at more DC, uh, DC multiverse figures from McFarlane Toys, but yes, yes, we are going to be looking at the big bone made bat cycle with the big giant bat head that looks like something that would have come from a Meatloaf album cover or something maybe from Megadeth. Uh, Megadeth probably wouldn't have covered this. Definitely Meatloaf. Definitely Meatloaf. Somebody right now is thinking... Uh, did they? Is there a recipe for meatloaf that includes bat heads? No, no, it's it's a singer. It's it's probably past your time. It's you know long time ago. Meatloaf, check it out. Very long songs. It's one of those things that you have to kind of sit down and commit to. All the older viewers will know exactly what I'm talking about. But definitely lots of stuff coming your way, guys. So as always, thanks for watching, and I'll see you guys next time.